trademarks, monetization and brand strategy. I am Swapna Sundar. I am the Managing Director of IP Dome Strategy Advisors Private Limited based in Chennai. I am a patent attorney and principal strategist for IP Dome. I am also the author of the IP Smart Workbook, the Lab to Market Guide to Inventing. We are going to be looking at some of the most important issues concerning trademarks including grounds for refusal, trademark registration process, classification of goods and services, infringement, monetization of trademarks, strategic uses of trademarks and brand, and brand value and we will close with some case studies. What is a trademark? We find on your screen several trademarks that we recognize. A trademark is a mark capable of being represented graphically. It should be capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one person from those of others. It should also indicate a connection in the course of trade between the goods and services and the proprietor of the mark. Trademarks may include the shape of goods, their packaging and their combination of colors used in the packaging are also elements of trademarks. We find here a few shape marks, the Lego bricks for instance and the Kit Kat chocolate bar. The shape of the Coke bottle is also registered as a trademark. Poppins is a good example for combination of colors. So is Google. However, trademarks can be refused re registration on certain grounds. The Act provides for the absolute grounds of refusal of registration in Section 9. A mark that is devoid of any distinctive character cannot be granted registration. For instance, a mark pure water for drinking water is devoid of distinctive character. Again. Marks that consist exclusively of marks which may serve in the trade to designate the kind, for instance, a dress or socks, quality, high quality, synthetic, natural, quantity, 5 pounds, 2 kilos, intended purpose, bird seed, dog food, values, high value, or geographical origin such as Kanchipuram, for saris originating in Kanchipuram, the time of production of goods and services such as 24 bar 7, these cannot be granted registration. Further absolute grounds include marks that consist exclusively of words or terms which have become customary in the trade or current language. For instance, this type of fiber board which is used in creating molds and cornices in buildings is called fiberglass reinforced gypsum. The trademark FRG cannot be registered. However, if the mark is well known or has acquired a distinctive character through use over a long period, they may be granted registration. Further, if it is of such a nature as to cause deception or confusion, or hurt the religious susceptibilities of people, they may not be registered. They should not comprise scandalous or obscene matter. And this is decided by the examiner. Further, if it is of such a nature as that to be prohibited under the Emblems and Names Act, such as the flag of India, these cannot be registered as trademarks. Trademarks that comprise only of shapes of goods resulting from its nature or to obtain a technical result or give substantial value to the goods may not be registered. For instance, a trademark in the shape of an apple for apples cannot be registered or the shape of the plug point or plug which is necessary to be in that shape with the same pins that are required cannot be registered as trademarks. Names of persons without their authority or the authority of their legal heirs or assignees cannot be used as trademarks unless 
the applicant has a direct relationship to the product. Besides the absolute grounds of refusal, there are also relative grounds of refusal. For instance, identity with an earlier mark or similarity with an earlier mark for similar goods. We find here Star Preya and Star Brooks, Starbucks coffee. Starbucks coffee is the earlier registered mark. We also find Crocodile and Lacoste. They both use the identity of the crocodile and may use and may lead to confusion in the minds of the consumer. Use of a mark that would take unfair advantage or be detrimental to the distinctive character or repute of the earlier mark may not be registered. Further, marks that are intended to pass off goods or are prevented by the law of copyright cannot be registered as trademarks. Some of these may be registered with the consent of the owner of the earlier mark. We find below the logo of Amul. Amul is a trademark because it represents the origin of the goods that are produced by the company. However, it is also written in a distinctive art font. If a logo would qualify for copyright protection as a piece of artwork separate from its use as a corporate identifier, it is copyright protected and may not be registered as a trademark. Applying for a trademark. The proprietor of the trademark must apply for the trademark in form TM1 in English or Hindi. The application should contain the trademark, the goods and services, the name and address of the applicant or agent if he is using an agent, the period of use of the mark and the signature of the applicant. If the mark is proposed to be used, it must be mentioned that the mark is proposed to be used. It must be filed at the appropriate office. The flow chart is also represented on the screen. As soon as the application is filed, it is allotted an application number and goes through examination. It takes about two years for the process to be completed in general in India. However, it may work out faster for you if there are no objections or oppositions. If the examiner accepts the mark immediately, the mark is sent for publication where it awaits opposition. If no opposition, is forthcoming, then it is sent for registration and published as a registered mark. You have to pay the renewal fees and maintain the mark for the duration of your business. If however the examiner finds an objection in the application, he might give you a show cause hearing. It may be a written hearing, a written submission or you may present the case yourself in person. If upon the hearing the examiner is convinced, the application is accepted and goes through the process for registration. If it is continues to be objected, then it may be refused. The applicant has the right to withdraw or abandon the mark. There lies a remedy to the intellectual property appellate board from the examiner's order. Again, if an opposition is filed by a third person, a date is fixed for the hearing and production of evidence or delivery of judgment on merits. If the opposition is allowed, then the application is refused. If the opposition is disallowed, the application may proceed for registration. Trademarks are granted for specific goods or services in accordance with the International Classification of Goods and Services. This is an alphabetical index provided at the end of the Act. Classes 1 to 34 classify goods and classes 35 to 45 classify services. You may find related products or services in the classification. An example is produced below. Class 9 provides a registration for computers, software, electronic instruments and scientific appliances. While class 42 provides scientific and technological services and research and design relating thereto. If a company wanted to run a web design process or web design service, they may have to register 
both in class 9 and class 42 when classes are not relevant when the mark is well known in at least one relevant section of the public in india by held by any court or registrar then classification is irrelevant further if the registered mark has a reputation in india then classification is irrelevant for instance the word cadbury which is a trademark related to confectioneries chocolates biscuits and eclairs may not be registered for cars in india registration of a trademark provides the applicant with certain rights exclusively these include the right to carry on a business in that name to import and export products for in that name to retail manufacture or sell or offer to sell or stocking in that name use of that trademark in an unauthorized way by a third party amounts to infringement the trademark may be used as part of a trade name or the name of his business concern <coughs> excuse me if the trademark is affixed to goods or packaging thereof or the goods are offered or exposed for sale or stocking with the unauthorized trademark or if goods are imported or exported under that mark these may amount to infringement we find two cases below in one the packaging is infringed and the other the product that is infringed is the name of the business concern uses of the trademark on business papers or in advice uh, on advertising knowing that such advertising is unauthorized amounts to infringement infringement takes unfair advantage of or is detrimental to the registered trademark in certain cases spoken use of those words as well as their visual representation amounts to infringement we find below the registered trademark xerox and yet another trademark in india called student xerox student xerox although registered independently is an infringement of the registered mark xerox xerox is a coined word developed from the word xerography which is a technical term for photocopying monetization of trademark a registered trademark may be assignable and transmissible with or without the goodwill of the business concerned an unregistered trademark may be assigned or transmitted with or without the goodwill of the business the assignment however shall not take effect unless the assignee within 6 months applies to the registrar for advertisement of the assignment and advertises it in such form and manner as prescribed the advertisement will enable the applicant and the licensee to inform the public about the transaction strategic uses of trademark in the last 15 to 20 years we find that the value of intangible assets versus the value of tangible assets has grown phenomenally we find in 2005 that roughly 80 to 90% of the value of a company lies in its intangible assets for many companies these may include trademarks and patents in some cases the brand value of the company is far higher than the technology value that they own brands have the potential to influence consumers choices and facilitate the consumer choice by providing information the consumer believes that when he is buying a branded product he is reducing the perceived risk brand value is the net present value of future cash flows from a branded product minus the net present value of future cash flows from a similar unbranded product simply speaking what the brand is worth to the management and the shareholders is the brand value brand values are affected by corporate brand management such as creation of new brands or extension of existing brands 
Brand equity, on the other hand, describes the value of having a well-known brand name. Owner of the well-known brand name is thought to be able to generate more money from products than a person having a less well-known brand name. How do you create a brand? The first legal requirement for creating a brand is to file a trademark, but this must be done after a search is conducted to decide whether such marks are already registered. Further, the classification must be appropriate. The, pick, the trademark must be filed well in time to prevent competitors from enjoying the benefit of the brand. If a design strategy is to be used, then the trademark and the brand must coincide with other emotional aspects such as designs and copyrights. A trademark portfolio may con comprise registered trademarks as well as unregistered marks. The best way of improving the mark's value is licensing or co-branding. Registering a domain name in the name of the trademark also helps to improve the value of the brand. It's very important to ensure that the trademark does not lose its validity or you fail to renew it and it lapses into public domain. It's also important to review and assess the value of the brand continuously and enforce the trade, trademark in court if necessary. Trademarks enable the consumer to feel good when he or she buys the product. Normally, a trademark attracts a particular target market to the product. Here we see two related products, Pfizer's Viagra, which is a sildenafil molecule, and Lily Icosis Cialis, which is a tadalafil molecule. They both help in erectile dysfunction. Levitra is an associated product with the Vardanafil molecule. Pfizer chose the name Viagra in resemblance to Niagara, which has a honeymoony feeling. There is a deep connection between water and sexuality, which was sought to be exploited by Pfizer. Again, the English word why meaning to fight and similar other words like vigor, vitality and victory all persuaded Pfizer that Viagra was a good name. Cialis, on the other hand, differs from Viagra in look, feel and meaning. If Viagra is about individual male sexual performance, Cialis is about relationships and sensuality. It's about the romance of sex. The term is natural. It may be used to name a flower such as a chysis or an orchid or Synorchis, the dog orchid, or love. The two products are aimed at different target segments and the name helps to reach out to the market. Hedging brands. It's important to create a large pool of trademarks. Interrelated marks support the brand in on the whole. Nestle is one of the largest brands in the food industry. They own over 2,000 brands. Brands are categorized by their target markets, such as children, adults, mothers, babies, food, milk, beverage, water. Each of these has a separate target market. The brand value alone of Nestle is estimated at $21,000 million. When you have many brands in the market, it lowers the direct competition between the brands. Further, your brands get a greater exposure on the shelves and therefore a greater segment of the market value. It's also important to keep updating brands. Tata has done this since 1999. Wolf Orleans reviewed about 100 businesses of Tata and recommended which should be named Tata and which should be endorsed as Tata Group brands. 
Other than this, they also created a separate segment of independent brands such as the Vivanta. This was done to ensure that the core Tata brand meaning was associated with the most valuable and best performing units. They reshaped Tata from a heavy industrial conglomerate into a modern knowledge-based business. The new Tata logo, which is a forward-looking symbol, is also designed to look good on cars, an important growth market in India. Today, Tata has a presence almost everywhere in the world and the new logo helps them to forge ahead with confidence. Brand extension. Extending the brand to new products or new markets improves the revenue generation capacity of the brand and also helps it to reach new markets. The Chota Bean mark was launched in 2000 by Green Gold Animation as an animation series aimed at small children. Today, it is one of the hottest properties in licensing, with about 45 licensees spread across the globe and across a whole, sale, whole number of businesses such as beverages, board games, apparel, toys, stationery and others with direct connect to kids. The product is in sale or merchandise is in sale in many countries including Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore and Middle East. At a conservative estimate, the global brand value is about 100 crore. Thank you for your time. Hi viewers, to know more about us, please visit fusionlawschool.com or you can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Links are provided here. To stay updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you like this video, please like, share and comment down below.